Hello. As someone who teaches statistics and also consults with people on a variety of projects, I'm always in the market for open source resources and materials that I can share with my students and uh, potentially uh, support uh, the research endeavors of other people. So uh, this is kind of why I'm sharing this with you because I've run across a couple of programs online that, uh, that you can freely download and uh, they have a variety of, of benefits really um, that you might not be aware of. So um, one program that you might be interested in is called JASP. It's uh, J-A-S-P. And you can find it at jasp-stats.org. And um, so you can download this program. Again, it's a free program. It has a number of different options, statistical options that are available to you. It's probably not as expansive as uh, a number of um, other programs um, that are commercial, such as uh, SPSS or uh, Stata or Systat, but it does have a number of features that you, that many people might be interested in. and certainly has a great interface for uh, potentially teaching uh, statistics. Another program that I've run across is Jamovi, and uh, this is what it looks like. And I'll be honest, really the interfaces of JASP and Jamovi look very similar. Um, JASP does incorporate uh, Bayesian statistics, which uh, Jamovi doesn't. But uh, Jamovi might be a little bit more expansive in terms of functionality. But again, both programs really um, seem to have a number of features that are that are quite nice. Um, I personally, you know, these are not programs that I have had a lot of experience with, but I've just been kind of messing around with them, and I thought I would share what I'm what I'm finding out with you. So I'll probably share some in this video, and then I'll move on in other videos demonstrating other features of these programs. So in this video, I'm going to focus mainly on Jamovi, though. So um, I'm going to open up the interface. This is what it looks like, and you'll see that there are various uh, modules at the top. Now, when you first install Jamovi, it won't be quite as expansive as, as this. Um, some of the modules uh, you have to add. But I will tell you, it's very easy to add them. If you go over to this little plus sign right here and click on it, you can go to, to a little library. And there are a number of modules that are available. You can see there's advanced mediation models. There's R data sets. Um, you can see a meta analysis and, um, and so forth. So I've added several of these. So, that's, um, so if you don't find them all when you first open up, just be sure that you go there and you can get some. So now I'll open up a data set. I'm going to go to open and go to browse. And one thing to note is under data files right here, you can see that it's reading my SPSS data files. This is in a folder. Um, this basically is college football data. But when you click on data files, you'll see that it will read comma delimited files, SPSS files, R data files, Stata files, SAS, and even JASP. So uh, I'm going to stick with SPSS, and I'm going to read in uh, a data set. So this is it right here. So this is just uh, college football data from, um, from uh, various teams um, over several years. So one of the things that I'll, I'll show you is that if you want to change the measurement scale of a variable, um, you can easily do that or, or change characteristics. You can just click on uh, a given variable, and you can see right here you've got uh, the name so you can kind of change that if you wanted if you want to call this win games one or something like that you can do that it will change it um, you can see the measurement scales that are available you've got continuous ordinal nominal right here uh, it actually read this in as nominal but I'll, I'll i'll treat it as continuous just because it's the closest to the scale variable um, that we have it's actually you know, obviously it's going to be a discrete ratio variable but that's what we have so at any rate, um, just kind of looking at uh, just under exploration, under descriptives, you can see that um, you know we can move this variable over right here. This is postseason football power index, and you get various descriptives. It's being treated as continuous. Um, you'll see that if you happen to have a, a categorical variable, uh, basically a novel or ordinal variable, then you can ask for frequency tables, but you can't get any kind of um, frequency tables in the context of a continuous measure. So 
Um, I'm not going to really bother with any of these others. Uh, I, can, I guess I could use conference right there if I wanted to move that over um, and ask for frequency tables for that. You can see that we get uh, the conference uh, frequencies for conference right here. So you got the frequency counts, percentage, cumulative total, and so forth. So um, at any rate, uh, there you go. Under statistics, um, you can ask for, you've got central tendency, mean, medium mode. Obviously, some of these are not making sense with conference, but it's in there. Uh, so I'm just going to keep reading along. Um, quartiles, you can ask for those. Standard deviation, variance, range, skewness, kurtosis, uh, normality tests. So again, all that other stuff doesn't really apply to the conference variable. So just kind of ignore that. But you can see it fills in for uh, there's postseason FPI uh, that's being generated. Under plots, uh, when I scroll down, you can see that we can ask for histograms for the continuous measure. Um, so that's it right there. We can add a density plot on top of it. And uh, there you go. Uh, for uh, our, our um, conference variable, I can ask for a bar plot right here. And you can see what it looks like. So there you go. So those, those are just a few of the descriptives. If I want to ask for a scatter plot, I can certainly do that for, let's say I've got postseason FPI and preseason FPI, and there you go. And we can click on linear right here and fit um, um, the linear relationship uh, that way. Uh, under regression, we can click on correlation matrix, and you can see that we can move our, you know, our variables over in the following way, and we can have, you know, we get Pearson's correlation and significance level. If we want to flag the significant correlations, you can get that. You could also ask for Spearman and Kendall's tau. You can also ask for confidence intervals as well. Um, so those are, uh, you know, being presented as well, the 95% confidence intervals that are showing up right there. And you can get basically a correlation uh, plot. There it is. Uh, and you can also look at, uh, you know, um, you know, trying out uh, testing, you know, non-directional and directional hypotheses there. If we go to um, linear regression, you also see that we can easily run some, uh, some models. So I'll just move uh, this variable over to the dependent box, and I'll move um, preseason FPI over, and let's say red zone scoring percentage. So there you go. You can see we have the multiple R and R square values. Um, if we go under the uh, model fit, you can see we have R and R square. If you want the uh, F test uh, from the ANOVA, you can see we have the F value and significance level. Uh, adjusted R square, we can add that as well. Model coefficients, we can ask for the standardized estimates, and uh, we can also ask for confidence intervals. So I'll kind of broaden this out just to or move this over and broaden it out a bit so you can see. So you can see how nice and interactive uh, the program is. Um, if you want to look under assumption checks, uh, you have options for collinearity statistics. So you get the variance inflation factor tolerance, uh, QQ plot of residuals and residuals plots. Um, there you go. So there's there, there are the uh, plots. So you can see that there are a number of options that are available there. You can see that we have analysis of variance. So if I want to run a one-way ANOVA, uh, let's say I want to go back to our conference variable as a grouping variable, and then I want to move uh, postseason FPI over. There you go. So it's, again, it's interactive. So you can see the ANOVA was significant. You can see that you have, um, you know, assumption checks. There's Shapiro-Wilk test, um, QQ plot again, equality of variances, a lot of the same stuff that we are familiar with in other uh, statistical packages. So there you go. You also have post hoc tests that are available. So, um, you know, I can ask for two keys, uh, post hoc tests and, um, and so forth. So, uh, another, uh, nice, uh, benefit, uh, that I've added, um, is actually the mead mod, um, module right here. I can click on mediation right here. And let's say I want to use postseason FPI as a dependent variable, preseason as, um, let's say a predictor. And let's say I want to use red zone scoring percentage as a mediator. So you can see that it generates, um, you know, the mediation test. So you have the indirect effect, direct effect, and total effect with their significance levels. You'll also notice that uh, if I want the path estimates themselves, there they are. Um, 
if I click on estimate um, plot, you can kind of get a little plot of the, um, the coefficients, if you will. You also have options for um, you also have options for confidence intervals, so for associated with the uh, various effects. Uh, you can get percentage of mediation uh, that's given right here. And you also have options for bootstrapping uh, as well. So right now the standard errors are using the standard approach, um, whereas if you want bootstrap standard errors, you can generate that. I'm not going to click on it because it takes a few seconds to, uh, to obtain it, but it works uh, fine. It just takes a few seconds for it to, to play out. You go under linear models, um, which again, I've, I've added um, to the um, using the uh, addition of the modules option. Um, under GLM mediation model, you can see that you get sort of a default path diagram. And you can see that we can add in, you know, there's postseason, there's preseason, adding it to the covariates there. And I can add in, you know, red, red zone scoring as a mediator. So that's what it would look like. And you can see that the various effects we're filling in along with, along with um, you know, confidence intervals and, and so forth. So, you know, there you go. As, and so you can also see as I kind of scroll over, it's a little hard to see because I'm having to go off the page. But you can see that we have our, you know, Z values and, and, and so forth. And there you go. So at any rate, um, you can also see that you've got uh, under mediation options, you can ask for uh, you know, the default included the standardized coefficients, which we had right there. But if you didn't want them included, you could click off of it. It'll go away. Uh, you also have options for bootstrap, um, standard errors, and, and confidence intervals, and so forth. Uh, another thing to kind of note, too, is that, um, you know, if we go back to the mead mod uh, option right here, you do have the option for moderated multiple regression, basically where you have a dependent variable um, you would have a you know predictor variable, and let's say that um, we're moderating that effect based on stadium size right here. If you want to take a look at what it would look like, um, those are various um, estimates that are available to you. And it looks like it's not uh, generating anything right there. So I guess let's see what we have here. Let's try moderator 2017. So there you go. So this would be an example where you have a um, moderated multiple regression right there. If you want a plot of the simple slopes, uh, you can see there it is. And obviously, there's no real moderation going on, but you do have that option. Again, you have options for confidence intervals and bootstrapping. If you go under um, this option again, you do have the option for uh, going back to our previous um, demonstration where we had you know postseason, uh, preseason, and then we had red zone right here. Uh, we can also and in multiple mediators, so there's schedule strength right there. And you can also, down here under moderators, you can also test for uh, moderated mediation and so forth. So I'm not gonna demonstrate all that there, but just to show you that those are things that are available to you. So um, at any rate, this was just kind of a, a quick drive-through uh, of the uh, Jamovi. There's a lot more options that are, av are available to you. You can see there's factor analysis. Um, you've got uh, various options with uh, frequencies and so forth. Regression, you've got uh, binomial, multinomial, ordinal logistic regression, and so forth. So there's a lot uh, that's available to you. So um, like I said, this was just kind of a, a, a quick drive through just to show you what options that are available to you uh, using uh, the Jamovi program.